Okay, before we get into the video where we were talking about Chick-fil-A <laughs> ran out of hash browns, I want you guys to understand that I've created a new channel, The Corporate Game, nothing but pure business. This is a channel for those of you who want to start your own corporation. We'll be talking about LLCs, holding companies, business credit, marketing, training, hiring, anything that has to do with starting a business, that's what we will be doing on that channel. This channel will be about the broader economy. Nothing's gonna change. So the link is below if you want to be part of that experience. So let's get into this video. A few weeks ago, I went to a place called a Corner Bakery and I ordered the avocado scrambled eggs and it's supposed to come with potatoes, right? And they didn't have any potatoes and I didn't think nothing of it. But over the last few weeks, I heard a guy in the hallway said that Chick-fil-A, he went there two days in a row and they didn't have hash browns. So what is going on with potatoes? Because I did a little research, I started doing a little digging and the potato farmers have had a bumper crop They've had a 20% 20, 20 increase over last year's yield. So from the potato standpoint and the potato farmers, there are plenty of potatoes, plenty. Many of these farmers are looking at a situation where they're gonna have to plow under these potatoes because they can't get them to market. Now, why can't they get them to market? Now, this is something that I've been talking about for years on this channel. Remember when the CARES Act came out and I said that to give people $600 a week on top of regular unemployment benefits was a bad ideal. Very, 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 very bad ideal because you were giving these people $2,400 a month more than they've ever made in their life. Now, I'm going to tie up how the CARES Act has something to do with our current potato shortage where the corner bakery doesn't have potatoes, while Chick-fil-A doesn't have potatoes, and other businesses don't have potatoes. You could call this the revenge of the low-wage worker. One of the reasons that, because once again, potatoes are coming from Maine and other places. They're not coming from China. The potatoes are not sitting on a container ship outside the coast of California. Potatoes are an internal situation. Now, why are we having a shortage of potatoes and other items with our supply chain? Now, there isn't a shortage of truckers. Once again, there is a churn of truckers. Let's go ahead and talk about that. One of the things that I have seen with the trucking business and why I am not ever going to be part of the trucking business. I know that's kind of funny since I started this car rental business, which is, has a very high hassle factor, is what I have seen is for trucking, the biggest issue is with the drivers. And you can have someone driving you for three months and then someone's like, hey, if you drive for me, I'll pay you 25 cents per mile. So every 100 miles, that's $25, 1,000 miles, that's $250. 10,000 miles, that's 2,500 bucks. So for a trucker, you know, 25 cents per mile can add up quite quickly, but it's deeper than that. Because uh, there's a guy that has a, a show, the Asian Ma show, and he shows truckers are making six figures, and some of these truckers are millionaires. So if you wanna make some money and you're willing to drive, you can make some money trucking. That ain't the problem. The money is there. Let's talk about this new phenomenon that has hit America. Is my business sexy or not? Right now, you have someone who is sitting at home, sitting on the couch, watching football, who could, who's perfectly suited to drive a truck and they will never, ever, go to truck driving school, they will never get a CDL, they won't do it. Because trucking, and once again, Asian Ma show, he, he, he shows a lot of stuff how trucking can be extremely beneficial from a financial standpoint, but trucking 
is not sexy. See, this is something that I've been studying and I've been looking at because right now there's a multitude of jobs out there that people will not do because they're not sexy. Let's talk about working in the Amazon warehouse and Amazon has very, very, very high tur turnover, very, very high turnover. And you know what? And what Amazon is just like, we're just going to keep hiring we're gonna people, keep people quit. We'll just keep hiring people quit. We'll just keep hiring. And there is nothing sexy or glamorous about taking this box from point A to maybe a truck or to another pair part of the warehouse there. There's nothing sexy about that. There's nothing sexy at all about it. And here's the thing, as long as Amazon is selling goods and services and whatever else Amazon sells, the internal workings of the warehouse will never ever be sexy. It will never, you know, taking a box from over here to over there, it's, not, it's never going to become sexy. It's never. Uh, working in the restaurant, taking the order, going to the table. Hi, sir. Uh, welcome to Shea Spanky's. Uh, today's special is this. There's nothing ever going to be sexy about that. There's nothing that's ever going to be sexy about driving a truck. There's nothing that's ever going to be sexy about a lot of jobs in America. So right now, like I said, you have someone who is at home Sunday watching football games, unemployed, broke, and they will never, ever work for Amazon. They will never, ever drive a truck. They will. And also, let's get back to the potatoes. Um, this is a seasonal thing because the truck drivers who move potatoes, they're only going to work for a little while, then they're going to have to do something else. So this is another drawback to getting truckers to move potatoes. But this is the beginning of a big, big issue that I feel that is going to become very, very apparent in many business models in 2022. If you own a business and you have and here's the thing, these potato hauling truck drivers can make a lot of money. It's not like a low wage situation, but hey, what do you do? Uh, I, I drive a truck and I move potatoes. Uh, people ain't feeling that. They're not feeling that. So as long as we have this situation, because this is my opinion, the uh, pandemic changed the mores of America. I grew up in an America where if you could get a job being a bagging boy in a grocery store, that was a hot job. Typically, because there was a limited number of grocery stores that I could walk to, there was a waiting line. You had to wait till someone quit to get one of those jobs because they were highly coveted because, you know, you, you wore a little white shirt, you wore a little tie, you bagged the groceries, you talked to your neighbors. This was highly desirable. It was highly desirable. That America is dead. <laughs> that America is gone. We no longer have that America. Right now, what is the biggest job that most kids want to be when they graduate high school? Full-time YouTuber or a TikToker. This is, this is the coveted job. And you will see in the next 10 years, the mad rush to people going to TikTok, the mad rush of people going to YouTube, the mad rush of people going to Instagram, because it's not important to make money. You gotta make money doing something sexy. So not only is the money important, but what you do is important. Now, this is where the train runs off the tracks. Most of the Sexy, high paying, coveted jobs require a certain skill set. And this is where these people who are not going to be truck drivers, who are not going to work in the Amazon warehouse, they run into a problem. They are sitting there Sunday watching football, thinking of their best life, thinking of a life where they will have a job that has the ability to work remote 
has the uh, ability of perks. You could take off time whenever you want to. This is what they're sitting there on that couch watching football, thinking about. And they are so ill prepared for those jobs. Because <clears throat> this is the thing. I have a friend who has one of those kind of jobs. And because they need these group of people, these people actually revolted. It's like, hey, if you don't do what we want to do, we ain't going to work for you. That not everyone now can work remote from home. And they've built, they spent a lot of money just recently building brand new offices. Now everyone can work from remote. And this is what my friend who is highly trained in a very technical thing. She gets up in the morning at six. She works from seven to 10, takes a 7-Eleven, takes a nap at 12, then wakes up around one, then goes to the gym at three and works out from about three to six and then comes back home because she has these highly desirable technical skills she can get away with that but my friend my truck driving skill set friend my warehouse skill set friend you don't have those skills and once again i know what this person went through they went to college and then they went to an additional technical school to learn how to do these skills so Right now, we have this great repository of people who want those type of jobs. They want to work from home. They want to be able to take time off. They want all kinds of perks and they want high pay. Let's introduce Jordan Peterson to the conversation. I am not trying to be dismissive. I'm not trying to talk down to anyone, but there is a reason that people are poor. And it's not because there's some mythical fat cat in the clouds dictating who gets money and who doesn't. Because if that was true, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have went from my situation to where I'm at today if that was true. And no one helped me. I didn't have a trust fund. I didn't have any inside track. It was just me sitting down and working really, really hard. So Jordan Peterson says, that there's a certain segment of society that doesn't have the intellectual capacity for higher skill set jobs. And here is something that Jordan Peterson doesn't talk about, but I'm gonna talk about. Let's bring up TikTok. And I've talked about this and I've brought this up many, many times. TikTok makes you stupid. Why does TikTok make you stupid? because it shortens your already short attention span. Now, let's go ahead and talk about TikTok is blowing up. You've got these TikTokers with five and 10 and 20 million followers and they're making their little dancing videos. I'm gonna say something that's gonna sound extremely elite, elitist. I think TikTok is completely stupid. I, I don't watch it, I don't consume it because I know from a mental wiring of your brain what it will do to your brain so i don't consume it so i don't really know what's going on over at TikTok. and like i said I, just these these little dances and you know people come up and they do these little presentations that are insipid to me that are just i don't get it but once again let's go back to the lower social economic strata why are you here because intellectually you can't go here. And also let's go ahead and put a little more, let's put a little bit more wood on the fire, a little bit more wood. Let's say that you are really smart. Let's say you have an IQ of 140, which is close to genius level, but you are poor, okay? You are poor. And your parents never had anything. Your parents didn't go to college. Your parents didn't even graduate high school. So this is, even though you have the intellectual capacity to do these higher level jobs and a few people get through, a few people burst through. But the majority of these people, if you take, cause there was a study done and it followed these little kids, these little smart kids who were in the hood and these little smart kids in the hood went on to be truck drivers. They went on to be waitresses and they were really smart and they had the capacity. They had the mental capacity, but they didn't have the environment. 
So guess who did well in life with these high IQs, the people who were born in rich and well-to-do families? Because this should tell you the importance of environment. Environment is very, very important for building wealth. You got all of these folks right now, and once again, who are mentally, from a mentally standpoint, once again, I'm not trying to be dismissive. It's just, it, you are where you are. And they're sitting on the couch, watching football, enjoying life, not working and wishing and hoping that they can get one of these jobs, but they don't have the intellectual capacity. And let's go ahead and pull intellect out of it. Let's go ahead. I have a friend who just, I've known this guy 25 years. He is not super smart. He's intelligent, but he's not super smart. But his superpower is he's extremely disciplined, extremely disciplined. If you tell him to do something, he will stick with it until he can be perfect with it. That skill set, that's like a superpower to be that disciplined to stick with something. And he is rich because of that superpower. He doesn't play around. He's married to a nice looking woman. He has three kids. And one of the things that got him from his situation, because we come from similar backgrounds, is his high level of discipline. Now, let's go ahead and talk about TikTok. TikTok robs you of your attention span and it robs you of your discipline. So it makes you stupid and it lowers your ability to be successful. It lowers your, it just kills you in so many different ways. So right now we have the shortage, let's call it revenge of the low wage worker. And I'm gonna do a follow-up video of how they can pull this off. The revenge of the low wage worker. I am not going to work your soul sucking low wage job, man. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm better than that, I'm better than that. I'm not gonna do it. And they're not doing these jobs. They're not going to work. Uber, Lyft had a huge problem during the pandemic. People was like, I am not driving. So right now we have a situation where a lot of people in the low wage category are not working. <laughs> They're just like, I'm not doing it. I don't like it. I'm not feeling that. I'm just not going to do it. Now, this is why I predict that the bottom, let's just call it the bottom 20%, is exponentially going to grow. Because see, there is something that's called real marketplace forces. And at some point, these real marketplace forces are going to intrude on the lives of these people who refuse to work. Now, once again, if they could get that $100,000, $150,000 job, they'd be working tomorrow. But once again, look at the behavior like so this is why we're going to see a supply chain shortage in america from potatoes to other goods because the jobs these um supply chain transportation jobs are not sexy that's the first thing because some of them pay really well but even though they pay really well because they're not sexy these folks are not going to do them in 2022, 2023, you see, you know, as this thing goes on, these people are going to slowly start to be financially impacted. It's going to hit home one day. You know, this stuff is cool. You're 18, you're 19, you're 20, you're living out with your parents. All right. But is it cool when you're 45 living with your mama and your daddy? because you don't have a decent job, is that cool? And this is what's gonna happen because here's the thing, time stops for nobody. Once again, that clock never stops moving. That clock never stops ticking. That clock never stops counting down. And at some point, these folks who are not working, who refuse to do these non-sexy jobs are going to be so impacted because if you knew what I knew, Statistically, when you suffer a prolonged period of unemployedness, whether either you're laid off or you choose not to work, 
that impacts your income decades into the future. So these people who are voluntarily taking a hiatus from working because, hey, I can't find anything that makes me happy, that fulfills my purpose, that gives me meaning. And once again, going back to Amazon, moving that box from over here to over there will never, ever be sexy. There will never be a higher purpose. It's just not going to happen. And this is what these people are holding out for. And what I feel if you consume some of the men channel content that many of these people are going to be just like these women who are sitting out like this woman who is five foot two, 250 pounds, who's holding out for a guy who's six one with a six pack, perfect white teeth, makes six figures or even seven figures and will love her and love her only and never cheat on her. This is what these women are holding out for. And next thing you know, they're 50 and they got a cat. Many men who are in the same situations who, who are not working, many men and women who are not working, at some point you're going to get older. It's inevitable. And while you're taking this time out, because once again, the pandemic, it really did a doozy on the world. It really did because right now there are plenty of jobs plenty of jobs and because they're not sexy or because they don't pay enough money people are not going to do them and this is going to create a prolonged supply chain shortage because i you know i'm in business and there are other business owners i do business with and i was one of my places that does all the repair they had three guys quit in one day three guys just quit now these guys were um, auto mechanics and technicians and they went somewhere else for more pay so they didn't just go home and sit but yeah this is why we have a potato shortage and other areas so in the comments put down what you're looking for and you can't get in your area because I guarantee you it's gonna be more than potatoes it's gonna be a lot more than potatoes and this ain't going away this ain't going nowhere anytime soon because the messaging here on YouTube, you have so many marketers. If you buy my program or you buy my stuff that um, you can make a lot of money, not work that hard. And you can also kind of fall into that time work freedom category. That's what they're selling and that's what people are buying. That's what the people are buying. So I figure, and I'm estimating, I'm just um, spitballing here, that at the end of 2022, you're gonna see so much economic pain. You're gonna see so many people who are right now, who are consciously saying, I am not going to work that low wage, non-sexy job. I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna drive a truck. I'm not gonna move no potatoes. I'm not gonna work at Amazon. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to sit here and chill on my parents sofa. That's what I'm going to do. And this is, you know, like I have a situation where I have cars at the waiting, waiting for parts. They can't fix them till they get the parts. So I am deeply impacted by the supply chain shortage. I sit here every day and I hope like, please don't let the car break. Please don't let the car have to go to the repair shop because once it goes, I don't know when I'm getting it back because of the supply chain shortage. I have no clue. And one of the things that I am really, really looking at because uh, I'm, I'm starting to hear some stories. I know of someone and they're not a close friend. They're an, an acquaintance. And she got arrested last night. And I was just like, why'd you get arrested? Let me tell you why she got arrested. She was driving with no insurance. One of her lights were out and she made an illegal turn. I did not know that they were arresting people for having not having insurance. That's a new one on me because it used to be if you had a car with no insurance, you just like they would pull you over and you couldn't drive it and they would tow the car. But she actually spent the night in jail. And guess what? Guess what segment of society she's in? She don't have a job. She ain't working. 
See, these are the real economic forces that are going to happen. And she lives with her parents. She lives with her parents. So even with the subsidy of living with mom and dad, you still, as an adult, you still have a car, you have car payments, you have a car insurance. And, you know, it ain't like the good old days where you could ride around, you like, you go out and get you an insurance card, you pay your insurance, then you don't pay it. And then the police, everything is, it's in the cloud. It's all up in the cloud. So you can't pull that. And I was just like, you were driving with no insurance in the state of Georgia? These are the economic pressures that I'm talking about that are going to start to hit these people. No insurance, not able to pay their car. Oh yeah, the repo man, he repoing again. The eviction man, he's evicting. The foreclosure man, the foreclosure. So 20 into 2022, these folks who have consciously said, I am not going to work. That low wage, non-sexy job. I'm not going to do it. I feel that 20 into 2020, maybe even the middle of 2022, maybe even the middle of 2022, um, it's going to start slapping them upside the head because how long can you work with no money coming in and sustain yourself? Even if you're living with mom and dad, how long can you do that? Now, if you actually have no car payment, no bills, you could probably get by on 500 bucks a month. Like, you know, maybe your car insurance, maybe your cell phone bill, maybe a little food, a little money for food. But how many people can get all, get, get by on 500 bucks a month? What kind of life is that? <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting there like, what kind of life is that? So this is one of the reasons that we now have this internal supply chain shortage is because low skill low wage workers are like miss me with that i'm not doing it just simply not doing it i don't know like i said i feel that these people will be impacted maybe the middle of 2022 or maybe the end and once that economic reality comes in i need some money man this is when these folks will start to take these jobs but guess what these jobs are dis going to disappear. You know why? Innovation, automation. Right now, there are some smart people who are trying to figure out how to get around this. And like, I'm going to tell you, when autonomous vehicles and autonomous trucks come on the grid, I, you know, like I said, I feel 15, 20 years out. But once again, look at how fast they got the vaccine out because they had to. <clears throat> this thing may push those timelines quicker. And once we have an autonomous vehicle that can come pick you up at your house and take you where you want to go with no driver and this car can drive 24 seven game over game over. When this happens, Uber and Lyft drivers will lose their jobs. When this happens, most truck drivers, not all truck drivers, because there's going to be places like remote places where the grid isn't impacted. They're going to still need people to do those routes. But the average Uber, the average Lyft driver, game over. So you need to be getting yourself some marketable skills. You need to be going to school. You need you need to be taking certifications, you know, because once again, people are not going to do these jobs. I actually know of someone else who is being subsidized by her family. She doesn't work. She doesn't want to work. She's trying to start a business and mom and dad are paying her rent, paying her car note. How long that's going to last? How long that's going to last? So this is why Chick-fil-A doesn't have hash browns. It, it ain't going to get better no time soon. It's going to get worse. And it's going to get worse. And then once these people hit that economic reality where they got to go back to work, that's when things will start to change. Not a minute before they got to feel that pain. They got to like the person I know who got arrested last night. I mean, once again, 2022 is going to be a bear of a year for a lot of people. And I feel that we're going to be in the recession in 2023. 
That's how I'm reading the tea leaves. So let me know what in air, what stuff in your area can you not get? What is what, what, what are you finding hard to get your hands on? And that's all I got for you guys. And I will talk to you in the next one.